Nigeria's oil refining renaissance, Dangote's 15 billion US dollar oil refinery plant, in the modern history of African industrial progress, Alhaji Aliko Dangote has proven to be a prototypical industrialist and outstanding entrepreneur. He managed to accomplish it in the cement industry, did it again in the sugar refining industry, revolutionized commodity production, and thus is poised to do it in the petroleum downstream sector. After the government, he is Africa's largest individual employer of labor. Hundreds of thousands of households benefit economically as a result of the jobs produced by this innovative goal-setter and brave investor. XCMG Construction Machinery will collaborate with Dangote Industries Limited on the world's largest oil refinery project, which will be located in the Lekki Free Zone in Lagos, Nigeria. This refinery is owned by the Dangote Group, but Nigeria and Nigerians will benefit the most from the new order that this great national enterprise is about to usher in their downstream sector. Dangati Refinery is indeed coming to the rescue. Welcome to Thinkridge Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship rather than global pity is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Nigeria, Africa's largest oil producer, currently has four oil refineries in operation. The plants, however, are in a condition of partial shutdown due to old equipment and inadequate maintenance, with a total daily output of less than 445,000 barrels, while average daily demand is around 40 million liters, which is 7 million liters less than what is produced locally. Nigeria is the only crude oil-producing country that relies on imported refined goods due to the four refineries' repeated failures, which is rather sad. This incompetence of local refineries developed an abysmal body of corruption termed subsidy regime, wherein an economic sabotage cartel has abundantly hemorrhaged the country, which has pushed corruption in the petroleum industry to stratosphere levels. The nation's economic string has been stretched past its elastic limit by the importation of gasoline. The nation's foreign reserves have been severely drained, limiting the ability of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the country's apex bank, to stable the local currency, the Naira. These anomalies have caused uncertainty in the downstream industry, which has resulted in vulnerability and volatility. An average Nigerian on the street is always afraid and concerned about when the next fuel shortage would strike. For a long time, Nigeria has lacked sufficient petroleum supplies. Petrol shortages are common during the holiday season, turning what should be moments of joy into moaning. Increases in gasoline costs frequently coincide with increases in inflation, making life even more difficult for the already impoverished masses. Nigeria is in desperate need of assistance. The effects of the COVID-19 outbreak, as well as the unprecedented drop in oil prices, which account for more than 90% of the country's foreign exchange earnings, are wreaking havoc on the country. Since March, it has been obliged to deflate its currency, the Naira, twice and seek its first-ever loan from the International Monetary Fund, which predicts a 5.4% economic contraction in 2020. The petrochemical complex is daunting even for Dengati, who has developed a commercial empire that includes cement factories across Africa and businesses, ranging from sugar mills to salt refining facilities. The tunnel has a light at the end of it. According to its chairman, the Dengati oil refinery will be completed by the end of 2021 and operational in the first quarter of 2022. Nigerians should rejoice at this encouraging news. When fully operational, the 650,000 barrel per day refinery will be able to fill the void with adequate capacity to meet the country's refined product demand of less than 600,000 barrels per day while still exporting to other nations. For the first time, a country with a population of over 200 million people, the world's most populous black nation, will be self sufficient in its refining capacity. This is a turning point in the country's tumultuous history. When the refinery is operational, the burden on Nigeria's foreign reserves will be relieved, 
the narrow will strengthen and hundreds of thousands of jobs would be created for the country's teeming unemployed. And as a result, insecurity will decrease because enormous unemployment is inextricably linked to the country's withering insecurity. When a young person is employed, he will not have the leisure to engage in social vices. This refinery is owned by the Dangote Group, but Nigeria and Nigerians will benefit the most from the new order that this great national asset is going to usher in in our downstream sector. Project's Progress Construction machinery manufacturer XCMG Construction Machinery has dispatched a team of 81 engineers and technicians to work on the building of the Dangote Refinery. More than 2,500 units of construction mechanical equipment will be serviced end-to-end -end around the clock by the team. The Dangote Refinery project, which cost roughly 35.38 billion US dollars to build, spans 250,000 hectares. The project's first and second phases are planned to be finished by 2022. The refinery will manufacture gasoline and other petrochemical goods, such as polyethylene and polypropylene, once it is fully operational. Giants and Liu, XCMG's vice president and general manager of XCMG, import and export company mentioned that the refined oil output of Dangote refinery will meet Nigeria's gasoline demand satisfactorily, even satisfying West African need for refined oil, liberating Nigeria from its reliance on oil imports. To be effective, the refinery will also need to eliminate the cartels that have dominated Nigeria's fuel import market for more than two decades, providing a source of money for the politically connected and motivation for domestic refineries' continued dysfunction. However, once operational, it might serve as a powerful symbol of industrial development in a country that has experienced numerous false dawns in its quest to reduce its reliance on crude oil. The XCMG team overcame various hurdles, including road conditions that necessitated leveling with road rollers and graders, as well as excavators digging canals for drainage every few days. To transport big cargoes, roads and jetties had to be built, and a quarry with a storage capacity of 10 million tons of granite had to be dug specifically for the project. The Dangote Group has chosen to concentrate on skill development and capacity development. They've already trained nearly 300 people from the host communities and surrounding areas, and have sent over 200 engineers overseas to learn the ins and outs of operating refineries so that they may return home and operate their own. In addition, about 45,000 residences have been constructed on the site. The initial plan was for roughly 25,000 houses, but they decided to take measures so that if there is a sudden delay and a need to hurry the work, there will be enough housing for workers. When the pandemic lockdown occurred, they didn't have individuals coming from outside and going back outside every day because they were able to bring all of them inside and keep them within. As a result, there was no halt in the project's progress. Environmental Concerns Dangote will face a more complex challenge with the refinery's environmental impact than with COVID-19. The global shift among corporate multinationals and governmental agencies toward disingenuous support for clean fuel standards is a likely factor in the Dangote refinery risk assessment. Alternatives to imported dirty petroleum have also been promoted by African industrial groups and the African Union, and Dangote has pledged climate-friendly refining technologies. Despite these assurances, construction on the new Dangote site has been a nightmare of pollution, with significant drilling and pipeline and road construction. The already congested urban area is now facing rising traffic congestion, as well as the potential of groundwater contamination. The region's fish are disappearing as a result of these activities. According to former fisherman Ayo Falaid, the dredging of the shoreline to San Phil Lecky Lagoon for the construction of the refinery caused the fish in the area to disappear. To get fish, we had to travel far out into the ocean, but even that was risky because the waves were unpredictable. A conservationist approached us and informed us that the sand filling was altering the local ecosystem. Oil spills are another big risk once the refinery is running.
For decades, environmentalists and community activists have spoken out and campaigned against the oil industry's dominance in Nigerian society, most prominently in the oil-producing Niger River Delta region. As in other parts of the world, the desire for a civilization based on renewable energy sources is gaining traction. Although Dangati claims that the refinery will minimize pollution and the environmental impact of oil, these measures are insufficient to address the ecological crisis. No amount of clean technology, industrial progress, or GDP increases will prevent the economic and climate challenges that are inextricably linked to profit-driven extraction. Only community organizers who mobilize that vision of reimagination will be able to compel the structural change that is desperately desired. The Benin city-based ecological think tank Health of Mother Earth Foundation in one of its write-ups remarks that with fossil fuels driving climate change and surely entering its last phases as a dominant energy source, the development of the Niger Delta requires urgent reimagination. The route to bringing into four truly sustainable development of the Niger Delta will come through the recognition and development of indigenous knowledge, cleanup and restoration of the region, and a development of a pathway based on sustainable biodiversity management that maintains the full ecological integrity of the region. Despite its claimed institutional commitment to renewable energy, the World Bank is funding the project. Meanwhile, the National Assembly is debating Nigeria's long-awaited Petroleum Industry Bill PIB, which includes provisions for a host community fund ostensibly to compensate oil-producing regions for environmental damage. The Petroleum Industry Bill, on the other hand, leaves it up to the firm to decide what constitutes a host community. Overall, the new oil refinery reflects the larger framework of a state and global capital rooted in a fossil fuel-based energy system. Thank you for watching. If there are any tips you think should be on this list but is not, leave a comment let us know. Help our channel grow. We hope this video has been helpful to you. Support us by liking the video, subscribing and turning on your notification.